Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. What's going on, boys and girls? This is Jagos1 sitting here. Um, basically wanted to go over one of the big rants that I kind of been having stored up. And it's over something that has happened recently. I looked at Vice, which is in um, one of my playlists about discussion topics. And I kind of wanted to go over that because... To me, when I started looking into Vice and how they talked to about Kim.com, I wasn't really all that impressed. Reason being, they didn't go into much detail about the case. They didn't go into much detail about Kim.com and his past. They weren't really trying to do anything. And on top of that, there's recently been a video about um, ABC where they talked to Kim.com. There's a generational gap there. They want to sit here and say, well, he's a pirate, he's a douchebag, blah, 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 blah. Nobody really wants to look into Kim.com. That's something that I want to go over tonight. And on top of going over it, there was plenty of other things that happened with um, Kim.com, his extradition case, and how it's connected to the things that I was looking into and researching before I ever got into the whole Anita Sarkeesian debate. Um, I've kind of moved on from that, but you, if you all want to see more about it, uh, well, I'll go over most of the details about what was happening. So let's go back two years. Two years is, what, 2012? Uh, maybe 2011, there was a lot of issues going on in terms of the ICE, which is a part of the FBI, basically um, seizing domains, which they, I believe they still do. They don't get as much coverage nowadays, but they seized domains and they were seizing about 800 last I checked. Um, they started with the original nine or eight with one of them happened to be Ninja Video. Now, I didn't get involved I wasn't involved with Ninja Video before um their everything was seized and they were one of the original 9 that was seized in say 2011. I don't have the exact dates. I'll probably have some of the um links in the underbar so you can see them for yourselves and come to your own conclusions. Now, the thing is, before that, I had been talking about, um, I have a blog where I talk about copyright, piracy, infringement, because I was big into Lawrence Lessig, um, his books, which were talking about, which were talking about them from a liberal perspective, if you want to um, sit here and talk about it. Anyway, Ninja Video got their site seized. There were five people that were basically um, arrested, or not even arrested, but they were raided by the police officers for criminal copyright infringement, which no one had really paid attention to, but it was a law that was passed through the Pro-IP Act. I'll have, again, all links are in the underbar. reason that they were um, prosecuted is that um, basically the DOJ... ICE, they were getting tips from the Motion Picture Association as well as recording industry. Mainly, it had to do with the MPAA. Um, for the most part, ICE has been the private police force for quite some time. So, they don't really like this stuff kind of reported. But, they sit here, basically, when they say jump, the DOJ pretty much goes how high. And... Then they get embarrassed because there's not enough information. And if they had done a lot more research beforehand, they wouldn't have done that. Anyway, I got involved with Ninja Video. The main thing that I was doing, I was doing articles about piracy, talking um, to the people there um, in regards to just trying to see about what was going on with their case and everything. But to put a long story short, with um, everybody that was going there, they got railroaded. I mean, in terms of the raid, they had all their assets seized. They couldn't get that back. 
they were on the hook for maybe two million when they made thirty thousand dollars a month. I mean, you know, they had a decent job, but for example, they had DMCA and everything. Uh, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act gave them safe harbor if they took down content through a DMCA process, and they had done that, but unfortunately, the DOJ says, well, you're going to have to take something, and if you don't, this deal is going to get worse. There was a plea bargain. I mean, all of this stuff is out out in the open there's plenty of um articles talking about it and how they had to cop a plea deal um in terms of hannah bashara and i believe matt it's been a while since i've talked about this they all got hit with criminal copyright infringement for running a website that people could stream and see videos from movies from so with that being said there was no evidence I mean, all of the evidence it pretty much been seized by ICE. They couldn't sit here and get the site. They couldn't get the, it was redirected. And there's plenty of top level stuff. I could go into technical details. I don't really want to, but basically, ICE took their site, took their money. They were railroaded. They got the full Aaron Schwartz treatment. That's basically what I want to say. Now, this is connected to chem.com because Carpathia is the storage unit for both Ninja Video as well as chem.com. Now chem.com is most of their content was on Mega Upload and at the time Mega Upload was a streaming site. And what would happen is ICE was telling Carpathia, "Hey, we need this and this for a criminal investigation." So Carpathia would send the message to Mega Upload to hold these videos in question. So Ninja Video got railroaded. I really didn't have anything to do with Ninja Video. I don't have much to do with Ninja Video now. I mean, I know these people are still there, but I mean, I, I kind of left the community because I got involved with the Anita Sarkeesian fiasco. Anyway, moving on. Um... Kim.com was going through things himself where he wanted to have a music site that was set up for the artists. Now, Universal was big on opposing competition. And Kim.com has a really shady past. I'll go to the Ars Technica site so you can see it in the underbar for yourself. The thing is... Kim.com was starting to compete with Universal, and Universal has connections to the recording industry because that's their lobbying group. And on top of that, Universal was basically pushing to silence Kim.com and all the people that he was working with. I mean, I have a link. I have what Buster Rhymes was saying in regards to he was upset because he wanted to have music from Mega Upload. What Mega Upload was doing is he was com wanting to compete and say, we're going to give you 90% of, of your revenue and keep it. Now, think about the uh, multi-channel networks on YouTube. He's saying he's only going to take 10% and he'll get that on the back, on the back burner somehow. In terms of a lot of people want to work with him and everything else. Now, on top of this, you have SOPA. Uh, while, while Ninja Video was being railroaded, SOPA was happening. With SOPA happening, Kim.com and Universal were fighting. But then SOPA happened and the Motion Picture Association basically was um, pushing... Uh, Chris Dodd was really pushing for a lot of change in the industry. Well, we got a big one. It was Kim.com's raid. With the raid happening, they shut down the sites. They took over the Hong Kong servers. Carpathia was holding on to the content, but they weren't going to get paid. The DOJ didn't want them to be paid. Um, in terms of the law, 
the the laws in place well they shut down the service and long story short there was a big fight about the storage and now what the kim.com what's happening in the united states is basically the storage of everything was sh washed completely all of the information that they had it was taken down the doj didn't want anybody to look at it because hey copyright infringement if we let you look at the files the mpaa said hey we want to sit here and shut down all the files but we have this little bit that we recorded to sit here and make you look bad and then um kim.com and his lawyers here are fighting to say this was cherry picking and we weren't allowed to do xyz um that's just a little bit of what was happening now in new zealand where the raid occurred has come to find out the police were spying on him months in advance he's a new zealand citizen uh even though he has a shady past whatever he was a outright businessman but you're not supposed to spy on the new zealand citizens so john key i believe is the prime minister had to apologize to him and i mean in terms of you know he was the big guy through uh through the vice article you can see or the vice video you can actually see what he's talking about there so kim.com was basically spied upon and with that spying what would happen is he got raided he had 72 police officers coming out for that now what happened well there was the soap event the public absolutely did not want SOPA to happen. That, moving on, they can go to the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. That's something that people need to be aware of later on. But for now, in terms of SOPA, Chris Dodd was stating he wanted something in regards to spending all that money for the Democratic Party when he got re he felt rejected. Now, let's pay attention to what Chris Dodd has had to say on the subject. Chris Dodd has been a lobbying force when he said he didn't want to go into lobbying. He went to the MPAA, though, which is the biggest lobbying group. I mean, this is Jack Valenti who said that the VCR is just like the Boston Strangler is to women. And that's been one of their money makers. The DVD has been one of their money makers. Every last type of innovation that has come out, the MPAA has been against, but then hypocritically makes money back. Hmm, sounds like somebody we know, just to put that into perspective. But I digress. So Chris Dodd um, basically throws a hissy fit. Kim.com, his site, his, everything is seized, taken down. They still have his assets frozen, I believe, to this day. His mother was raided um, in terms of everything else, what was going on. I mean, he got arrested, and all of the CEOs over there were pretty much arrested. That would force him to turn into an activist of, to a degree. Um, if you look into Kim.com, I believe, honestly, if Universal were to work with him instead of her, trying to put him in jail he'd be more than willing to do it he's a businessman he wants money he no no biggie on that he's probably not going to look into security he's looking into the government type deal blah 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 because that's what went with him went after him even though the mpaa and the riaa are his main enemies i guess you could say frenemies whatever now, looking at what happened with Mega Upload, the military wanted to support him. The artists wanted to support him. Everybody wanted to support him because they kind of hate the studios currently going on. And that's why he needed to be taken out. Taken out. The recording industry, the motion picture industry, they kind of hated them for their own reasons. And they wanted to extradite him, put him in jail. I mean, seriously, that's pretty much what they wanted to do because they've had this precedent. And I believe 2008, Australia shipped over, extradited their own citizen 
had him locked up here for four years in the United States and then had him shipped back, you know, lost wages, lost jobs. It made no damn sense. But the video is here on YouTube. Uh, I guess I'll throw up a link to there at the underbar. And just basically, you know, they want they had that precedent. They were pushing for it. But right now it's kind of stalled because they want to sue him in civil court and everything else. But there were so many things that were basically ham handed or this thing wasn't thought through all that much. It was a lot of emotion. Like, for example, Mega Upload is not an American company. It doesn't have to follow the DMCA. It just chooses to do so because it's favorable to them to have that business climate working with the United States. Nowadays, maybe not so much because of what was going on. But in terms of for Kim.com, they weren't served. I mean, the extradition has been rebuffed. There was illegal spying. And... This case is looking worse and worse for the Australian government who listened to the FBI and because they listened to the FBI and they wanted to score brownie points, basically Kim.com is looking more and more favorable as like this Robin Hood type figure. Again, don't be fooled. He still is a businessman, but in terms of, you know, fighting for our rights right now, he's a rich guy fighting for the common guy but you do see that dichotomy in, in what's going on he has money to fight and protect himself with expensive lawyers to prevent himself from being extradited thrown into jail like how the doj wants him and even um eric holder even though he said something he's like well i'm not going to say much about the case but we still want to get him for x for criminal copyright infringement which is a bogus claim but again i'm not going to get too much into that part but as you can see there's a lot of things that have been going on that weren't talked about by either vice or abc which really kind of annoys me as someone who's been following the Kim.com, Ninja Video, Roja Director, the Jazz One, all of these people that have had domain seizures, which no one has been talking about. So, after that, what has been going on in terms of Kim.com and everything? He's been releasing white papers and everything else, and if you go to Reddit, You'll see these things pop up. I mean, Ira Rothkin is one of the people on his defense. And there's been some great evidence and everything else that's been going on. I love to sit here and show that to you. So all of those links will be down in the underbar. So that way people can see it. But as you can see, there's plenty of things that were going on. Just from this rant, you can see for yourself that wasn't explored. I mean... The NSA spying, how has that affected the case? How has the judge allowed a lot more evidence from the DOJ than from uh, Kim.com, even though everything looks bad for Kim? How is it that the extradition was pretty much ham-handed? There was a lot of things to admit. And these guys, I'm not saying that they, they went in guns blazing. 72 members of them. To show the raid, that's kind of ridiculous if you really think about it. Particularly for Kim.com, who, for all intents and purposes, is a businessman. There's a few different videos that I'm going to link in the underbar so that way you all can see it for yourselves. Come to your own conclusions about Kim.com, Ninja Video, and everything that's been going on. But where do I come in for that? I've just been following these cases this long. I just kind of got involved with Ninja Video as just, you know, a forum member, community guy who is trying to sit here and see what was happening. But, I mean, for the most part, I couldn't stop what was going on. That kind of made me go through an identity crisis of my own. I realized that... You had to look a little bit deeper into these issues 
than what Lawrence Lessig was talking about. I mean, he's a great mentor. I still love his books, particularly on copyright. But in terms of getting a deeper analysis of everything that was going on, he just couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out through him. And so for me, I had to go and look at copyright issues myself to come to my own conclusion that it was a corporate right. I mean, copyright for all intents and purposes helped prosecute these p people who didn't really do anything wrong except running a website. And if a movie was there, they tried to follow the DMCA. They were prosecuted under laws from the Pro-IP Act, which was passed in, I believe, 2008. And all of this law is to help promote the recording industry as well as the Motion Picture Association instead of things that would help uh, help everybody in general, the public, the public domain, and the public um, having rights to access work. That's what's missing in copyright law at this current time. And through those 15 years or 30 years of legislation with 15 pieces of them, that's what we've been losing and missing out on. So I'll go more into detail about Kim.com, but this was mainly just the rant about the history of it. Um, a history that would would have been very interesting to see from Vice or to see it from ABC. But you all can decide for yourself if you actually like what I have to say or anything like that. So that's all I have for now. Uh, maybe tomorrow I can do another rant about something different. Or I can possibly start to look into different projects to work, run on here on this channel.